CSS defense is uh, by uh, Zulfani, Mr. Zulfani. And the title of the presentation is Performance Evaluation of Feature Descriptors for Application in Outdoor Scene Visual Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, Zulfani I'm from Image Processing and Computer Vision, all the laboratory. Today I would like to present my research report and the title of my presentation is Performance Evaluations of Feature Descriptors for Applications in Outdoor Scene Visual Navigation. Yeah, here's the outline of my presentation. First of all, I would like to explain about the background and then scene matching algorithm and the problem that faced by scene matching algorithm and the main discussions of evaluation method and final experiment results and conclusions. As we know that during the past decades, many scientists developed algorithms in order for the purpose of autonomous mobile robot. But what is actually the definition of autonomous mobile robot is a robot that can perform desired tasks without continuous human guidance. It means that the robot must perform everything by himself without any help from human. And including the questions of where am I, where, where the robot is. There is a need of robot to understand his own positions and there is a problem of self-position estimations that have to be solved by the robot. And in our laboratory, we use camera for the purpose of localizations and in our previous experiment, in our previous research, we already developed scene matching algorithm for the purpose of visual navigation. What is actually scene matching algorithm is defined in this slide. This algorithm is actually defined by two important uh, uh, approach. First one is teaching mode, and the second is playback mode. The teaching mode is, as we can see here, that an operator is going to give a command or an instructions to the robot to memorize important scenes or to memorize important landmarks during the, uh, the running course. And in this term, we have two kinds of uh, vocabulary. First, reference image and then input image. Reference image is a target image that is memorized by the robot in the teaching mode. And then, using the reference image, the robot will try to compare the similarity between reference and input images, captured image from the real-time running in the playback mode. As we can see here, that the robot will try to memorize the first landmark scene. For example, house, next, trees, and then building, and finally he go to the final, uh, to the finish line. And going to the next step is playback mode, where there is no operator uh, accompanied robot, so the robot must run by himself and find the answer or find the target matching that by comparing each of input image with reference image that he already remembered in previous uh, mode. So he will try to find trees, buildings and finally go to the finish line. Okay. But, however, it is very difficult for a robot to perform visual matching, especially in the outside environment. And however, uh, but the problem comes when there is illumination change, sudden illumination change in the outdoor environment. For example, as we can see here that the matching performance is drastically dropped when there is, for example, a heavy rain or a quick shift in the sunlight intensity that cause the failure matching from uh, his uh, matching performance. And therefore, we conclude here that illumination changes is one of great problem, one of great big problem for uh, visual scene matching. As we can see here that uh, this is the real images that we got from our experiment, even if it is from similar scene, but unfortunately the matching performance is unstable. So we conclude that the biggest problem for matching performance in outdoor scenes, visual navigation, is located in the illumination changes. And our thesis purpose is to observe what algorithm that is actually robust, that is actually strong against illumination changes. And since there is no related report according uh, these problems, so our objective is to provide a quantitative evaluations of matching performance against illumination changes. We hope that by solving this problem, scientists will easily find uh, what is actually 
the appropriate algorithm for the purpose of visible matching. Okay. Before we go further to our algorithm, we would like to explain you of what is actually the basic purpose, the basic principle for image matching algorithm. It is actually defined by two important aspects, that is detector and descriptor. The detector has an important task to find interest key points inside the image. For example, if you can see here that is the left hand side reference image and the right hand side is input image. The first task that has to be accomplished by the detector is to find interest key points inside the image. And of course, these key points is unique and contain rich of information. Next, the scripter will try to extract detailed information from key point into feature matrix. From key points here, and then extract into a more detailed formation, for example, orientation, scale, and etc. And there are lots of algorithms that are already proposed by scientists. For example, in detector, there's, there are famous uh, algorithms, for example, TAST, Harris Corner, and SCR, and etc. And the scripter is the pioneer is SIFT, and then SERP, and ACID. And then finally, after de descripting the key points, the matching is conducted by comparing the similarity between the descriptor. And the computer found that this point and this point is related and then matching is established. Okay. Let's go to the main discussions of our evaluation method. But before that, we have to answer the big questions of how to decide appropriate matching. Of course, as a human, it's very easy for us to determine that which is uh, this matching is actually appropriate or not. But for a computer, it is quite complicated for a computer to uh, decide whether it is actually a match or not. Therefore, we develop a new uh, formula that by finding the matching percentage or matching score between input image and reference image, we will find the behavior, the matching behavior between input image and reference image. And matching percentage is defined as uh, the ratio between AI and ARJ times 100%. The number of matching in input image and the number of key points in reference image. And here is the matching procedure that is actually developed in our algorithm. That first, there is reference image here, and this is the input image that is reported by the robot. And here is the actual images that we got from our experiment that as you can see here that the reference image and input image, when the input image is going near to the reference image, the number of matching is increased and then decrease when it go, go far than reference image. Okay. And the relations between matching score is plotted in this graph. Like you can see here that this is the first input image plotted in graph. This is frame and then matching percentage. The matching percentage is increased when it is going near to the reference image and then decrease when it is going far. But unfortunately the robot is confused that in what area that is actually correctly matched. It, it could be this, this, and this. We solve this problem by doing an approach with range of frame with good matching. So how to determine the range of frame with good matching is developed by determining uh, the tolerance area. The tolerance area is defined as an area which is considered to have true matching of range of reference true matching. Like the matching between the same scenes here that we would like to develop the ideal matching conditions. And then threshold of, for example, 50% is stated here. That <coughs> we got here that the frame between 39, for example, and 41 is the correct reference true matching. And this area is then considered as tolerance area. And outside this area is then considered as non-matching frame. And here is 
the exact data, data that we got from our experiment by, uh, for example, SIF. The, the algorithm is quite similar with the previous one that by stating or uh, determining the threshold, for example, 20%, we got a uh, matching percentage which is above 20% here, then we categorize this area as desired tolerance area. And by using the previous information here that in this green area is determined as correct matches, and the rest of them is false matches. And then outside here, outside this area, is then considered as non matches. And then the calculations of accuracy is then defined as follows. For example, that the true positive or the correctly detected or matches is TP, and false positive uncorrectly matches is FP, and the rate is uh, calculated as follows. One thing that I would like to emphasize is these numbers are actually varied according to the threshold. For example, if the threshold is 20%, it will get, it will get this number. And if we increase the threshold, of course, the number will be different. And finally, here is the evaluation that we developed, that we use for uh, calculating the accuracy of one algorithm that by plotting the relations between true positive rate and also false positive rate, we will try to observe the behavior of the accuracy of one algorithm. And the accuracy is actually easily calculated by measuring the, uh, the area under ROC curve. The greater the area, the more accurate the performance of a method. And here is the experiment that we actually done in our research that the data set of 2,242 outdoor scenes showing three different natural resolution changes. First one is A, sunny day, and cloudy day B, and in different time of cloudy evening C. The robot circle the building, and then this is the real data that we got from our experiment. As you can see here that the illumination changes is quite different between A, here, B, and C. And we also notice that there are many unwanted shadows that appear in our uh, data. And the examined algorithms are as follows detectors and also descriptors. Detectors are, that we examine is, are FAST, MSCR, SIF detector, SURF detector. These algorithms are known as famous one that used by scientists for their experiment. And the descriptors is the uh, pioneer SIF that is very famous for its robustness to scale and rotations and the derivation the derivations of SIF is SURF and then ACID. And here is the experimental result. As we can see here that the left hand side is for the conditions B and C is uh, the right hand side is for scene C. The result for combinations of FAST and SERV is outperform others. Combinations of FAST provide the best performance among others. And we also can calculate from uh, the area of under curve or B, the combinations of FAST and SERV uh, is outperform others. And for additional data, we also provide we also observe that ACID extracts the largest number of features, and SIF performs better extraction compared with SIRF. As for the extraction time, or run time, or millisecond, we can also notice that FAST achieves the fastest feature detection here, and MSER SIRF with a key points about 40 times faster than SIF. But unfortunately, ACID suffers from exhaustive computation time. And of course, this may be considered too slow for a real-time visual navigation. But however, time evaluations is relative result that shows broad tendency of methods computations. And here is the matching score uh, developed by uh, each algorithm. You can see here that the fast serve is outperforming others, as well as in condition C. Fast serve and passive is the slowest one. Final conclusions that 
the optimum result achieved by hybrid performance between fast vector and surface vector is the best and main, main favorable for real-time visible navigations. And of course, we have to conduct a more detailed analyze about this one. And SIFT achieves stable matching, but unfortunately, uh, computation time is slow. And finally, as if detected many features, but it's time consuming due to its computing complexity. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is time.